Hello, and welcome this day to Central United Methodist Church as we gather to worship on this fourth week of Advent. My name is Amy Seifert. I'm the pastor here, and I welcome all of you uh, this day, whether you are here in person or whether you are joining us online. If you are joining us for the first time this day, a special welcome to you on behalf of the community of Central United Methodist Church. We are a church uh, that is welcoming of all, regardless of anything, uh, age, race, sexual orientation, gender identification, physical ability. Uh, everyone is welcome here at Central United Methodist. We are uh, starting to see a surge in uh, COVID cases rising again. So thank you uh, for doing everything that you can to keep everybody safe. If you are worshiping here in person, uh, we appreciate you keeping social distance from one another and wearing a mask. Uh, if you are not fully vaccinated, although I know many folks are choosing to wear a mask now anyway. Um, so thank you for everything that you do to keep Central safe uh, during these continuing pandemic times. We are continuing our worship series of coming home for Christmas. We're almost there, folks. Friday night is Christmas Eve, and so we are uh, excited uh, that the end of our destination is near. Uh, but there are still a few lessons to learn about coming home, and so we will talk about those a little bit later. I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship this day. If you are here in person, I would invite you to rise as you were able and join Stacy as she leads us in our call to worship. Your uh, words and responses will be on the screen. Good morning. Come, join, lighten our spirits. Come, hope, lift us from despair. Come, peace, ease our frantic worry. Come, love, shine in all we do. Come, Jesus, be born in us. Come, Lord, set us free. Come, God, rule in our hearts 
and teach us to sing with joy. And would you join me in our opening prayer following along on your screen? Lord, be with us this morning as we encounter Mary and hear of the wondrous news that she received. Remind us that, like Mary, each one of us is a bearer of your good news. We are called to proclaim hope, peace, joy, and love in your name. Open our hearts and our spirits today to receive with great joy the love that you have for us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening song this day is, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Would you please join in singing? Let us take a moment uh, to greet everyone to, in worship this day the way that we can right now uh, by turning around and Good morning. Uh, welcome folks make sure that you uh, wave up to missy and welcome her as well as all of the folks who are worshiping online with us this day so uh welcome to worship this day please be seated Now, <laughs> but you, O Bethlehem of Ephra Ephratha, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from the old ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor 
has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the great name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. He shall be the one of peace. Sometimes when we are trying to make a difficult decision or try something new, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we just feel lost or alone or uncertain about life, the universe and everything in it says like that. Sometimes we say we need advice or support or a companion or someone to just come along beside and lift us up so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. What a blessing that is. For many of us, we go home. We talk to our mom, we talk to our dad, or our brothers, or our sisters, or close friends, or people we grew up with, those who know us best. We want them to be alongside us. We want them to be in our presence. Sometimes we know that being there, being home, will just make things better. Maybe it won't be fixed, maybe it won't be solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Now Mary, faced with the incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to her cousin Elizabeth's house looking for someone who knew a little bit of what she was going through and really looking for a place to hide from the reality of her condition before it became something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming little town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem was the little town of blessing. So today we seek a blessing. We light the candles, the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, and today the candle of love as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for a blessing is to be felt and to be lived we light the candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing when it's time to go home I'm excited today uh, to introduce or reintroduce uh, my newly named daughter-in-law, Claire Seifert. Uh, she is uh, going to be blessing us with the song Breath of Heaven today.
Thank you, Claire. Now that she's a member of the family, I can make her do this kind of stuff. <laughs> we celebrate uh, the ways that we are able to continue to be in community with one another, uh, even during these crazy times of uh, pandemic, uh, gathering within these walls and outside of these walls. And so there are several 
uh, opportunities and announcements uh, for the community that I would share with you now. Just a reminder, if you are part of our church council, there will be a very brief meeting uh, after worship today in Fellowship Hall, so I uh, hope you can make that. Uh, if you are watching online or part of that council, uh, you can go ahead and come to the church. Uh, rumor has it that San and his elves have brought some goodies uh, to share with us today, so uh, you don't want to miss those. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we are almost home. Christmas Eve is Friday evening. Uh, we will gather here at 7 o'clock for Christmas candlelight worship service. Uh, we will be here in person, and we will also stream it online. And so I hope you will make plans to uh, come and worship the newborn king this Friday evening. Uh, our Advent collections continue. Uh, we are uh, collecting for Wesley KU's food pantry. Uh, that is a monetary donation this time, so they can purchase specific items that they are needing. And we are also uh, collecting items for the DARE Center, Drop In and Rest. This is a respite facility for the homeless population that they can come and take a bath, they can get uh, food, they can get things, they can get warm uh, during these cold days. And I don't know if you uh, have seen the table uh, out in the narthex as you've come in, uh, but take a look at it if you are, are here because it is getting quite full. This is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful show of generosity. Uh, and I thank you for the, the generosity of, of this community uh, that is so willing to help those during this time of year. Uh, we also will continue to pray and remember the victims of last weekend's tornadoes. Uh, United Methodist Committee on Relief is on site, and uh, if you would like to help those folks with a donation, uh, you can give it directly to them. If you check your weekly announcements, uh, there's the instructions on how to do that, or if you'd prefer, you can make that donation to UMCOR through us, and we will make sure that we send that along. We also uh, celebrate our community by joining side of one another during uh, hard times as well as joyous times. And so as we prepare uh, to lift our joys and concerns before the throne, I invite you to uh, settle into an attitude of prayer for a moment. There are uh, several prayer concerns that I would uh, share with you. As always, we invite you to uh, look at those uh, concerns that are listed in the weekly announcements. Uh, those are sent uh, via email as well as postal service. And so um, if you are not getting those, please let us know here in the office and we will make sure that we get those sent to you. We learned this week uh, that Lori Fitzpatrick uh, is recovering from COVID. Uh, she has moved up to Atchison to be closer to her brother after the passing of her mother. And so um, she is doing well. She's not receiving or not experiencing a whole lot of, of symptoms. Um, but we would uh, ask for your prayers for Lori as she continues to do that. I've had an opportunity this last week to visit some of our shut-ins and some of those folks that aren't uh, comfortable coming back to church quite yet with, because of the pandemic. And so uh, an update on a few of those. Larry Grant sends his love to everybody. He misses you. Uh, he is working hard to be able uh, to come back uh, and be here in person with us, but he does still covet your prayers. Um, and so please continue to raise him up. John Dugan is uh, doing better. Uh, they have decided not to, to do uh, the additional stent at this time. And um, so he is undergoing some tests, but he is in good spirits. And so um, continued prayers uh, for these medical tests that will be occurring for him, or with him rather, um, and his continued healing. Uh, Marlene is uh, Don Vaughn's daughter. Um, she is still battling pneumonia. He had emailed me uh, this, uh, this weekend and asked for continued prayers for her. She is in a rehab facility right now um, trying to recover from that. So Marlene uh, is someone who should continue to be on your list. And then a personal one. Um, many of you know that I spent 14 years 
uh, out in southern Utah serving Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church, first as its music director and then as its associate pastor. Michael Chamnus was the senior pastor of my last four years um, while I was there and received word yesterday that he died very suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, and so, um, besides Todd and myself losing a very dear friend, um, would ask for prayers for his wife uh, and his kids, Anne, Alex, and Sarah, um, as well as a congregation that is mourning the loss of their, their pastor um, this week before Christmas. And so, um, yeah, that is hard. It's a tough one. And so um, I've been in contact uh, with some of the folks out there that I'm still friends with and um, some of the staff members and uh, assured them that Central would be lifting them up uh, in prayer today as they gather um, about 50 minutes from now. So um, let us uh, please remember the folks of Shepherd of the Hills. Are there other joys or concerns that we would raise this day? If not, then I would invite you to join during our time of prayer. Stacy will lead us in our prayer of confession, and then you will have some moments to pray silently before I offer a pastoral prayer and we uh, join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let us uh, join together. The words to the prayer of confession will be on your screen. Loving God, even in the midst of this season of goodwill, there is much to confess in spite of holiday cheer, stress, and anxiety rule our lives. We miss the reason for the season, focusing instead on Christmas parties, long to-do lists, and trying to get the shopping done. We fail to think about your reordered world, a world where the lowly are lifted up and the hungry are filled with good things. Help us adjust our Christmas priorities that we might join with you, O oh God, in preparing a world that welcomes the one who brings us peace. Lord, we can't quite imagine what it must have been like for Mary to hear God's request and to respond unconditionally with yes. We have a tendency to put conditions on everything. What's in it for us? What are the projected outcomes? Forgive us for our faithlessness, Lord slow us down, and cause us to take time to really consider the wonderful ways you have always worked in our lives. We thank you that as we hear the ancient story, we hear the same echoes of your mercy and grace. We are reminded that it is you who look with favor upon us as you did with Mary. It is you who have come to us and embraced us with your everlasting love. We do not need to find you, for we have already been found by your love. Be with those for whom this particular Christmas will be difficult. Be with those who have known the bitterness of grief. Be with those who know hardship or want. Be with those whose lives have become unstable or uncertain. Be with those whose health is compromised. Be with those whose business or jobs are in jeopardy. Remind us as we go through dark valleys that we are not alone. Remind us that the light of the world cannot be extinguished by the darkness. Remind us that even in darkness, there is the possibility of hope within the human breast. Remind us that you cradle us with your love as once you cradled the world in Jesus. Remind us that you wish us to be victorious people who overcome the world. 
Be with those whose hope is diminished today. Be with the homeless, the weary, the overworked, the hungry, the refugees, the suffering children of the world, and hold them close to you. May a better world be born, a world with love, justice, and peace. We ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who still teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Many thanks to our Mass Street Ringers uh, for their gift of music this Christmas season. We thank those who have continued to, to support the ministries. Uh, that allow us to continue uh, to be the church here in Lawrence and beyond. Uh, for those who are uh, wondering how you can make a contribution, a couple of different ways. If you attend in person, there is an offering plate outside of this room as you enter or as you leave uh, that you can place your gifts in. You can visit our website, lawrencecentral.org, for a link to our online giving platform. And we always appreciate checks that come in the mail. Our address is there on the screen. And so let us take a moment and... Bless and consecrate the gifts that we have received this past week. If you would join me. Magnificent God, as we focus on Mary, the mother of Jesus, we are reminded that you do great wonders and signs through the most humble and obedient of your children. As we give our gifts to you this day, give us ears to hear the whispers of the angels speaking to us, Give us eyes to see the needy and the unloved all around us. 
and give us faith to offer our lives to plan of your saving love. In Christ our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Well, today, as I mentioned, is the fourth week of Advent, and we are coming ever A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned Eckert's Drugstore, uh, an ad that they had that said, Christmas is closer than you think. Well, now it's even closer. Well, today we are going to talk about the blessing of home. And... I wanted to discover what people think of when they consider their blessings of home. What, what do they consider a blessing? And so I conducted a very scientific experiment to find out. I posted on Facebook. And I asked uh, on my page as well as a Lawrence community page, what are the blessings of your home and here are some of their answers and a lot of them were duplicates so i'm only going to mention them once but there were some some neat uh answers and some funny ones as well a lot of people say that the blessing of home is safety my home is my safe place home is a place where there is peace and harmony home is a place where there is lots of laughter uh, one person said, the blessings of my home are a roof over my head, food to eat, and clothes to wear. Uh, many people said family and traditions are a big blessing of home. Home is a place where you are accepted and have unconditional love, uh, no, no fear of judgment. It's a place of belonging and of welcoming. Many folks said that my home is my sanctuary. It's a place where people find warmth and contentment. And the best, the best line that I got out of all of these responses, home is where the food is. Well, for me, the blessing of home is my people. When I was a child, that was my parents, my grandparents, my aunt and my uncle and my cousins. And then as I got older, my people started, I included, including my husband, and then eventually our children. And now it includes my children's spouses. So home, the blessing of my home is my people. And the other blessing that I consider of my home is it's familiar. I know when I walk in my house that my dog Susie is going to go crazy excited to see me and my cats will look at me like, well, it's about time you got home. The cat bowl is almost empty. Those of you who have cats understand this. I know how my house is going to smell when I walk in. I know that when I go to a certain cabinet, I'm going to find what I want there, whether it's a plate or a cup or it's food. I know where things are. Home is the place that I can get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and not have to turn on the light because I know what's there and I know how to dodge around things and get to where I need to without hurting myself or waking my husband. So my house is my familiar. But what, a, what about when we talk about our church home? What are the blessings of our church home? Now, I think and hope that we would find some of the blessings, the same blessings that we find in our personal homes, in our church homes. I would hope that people would find peace when they walk into their church. I would hope that they would find other people that bless them. And I hope that they might find the familiar. 
Well, the story of Christmas and the events leading up to it and the birth of Jesus is one of those familiar things. Even people who don't necessarily tend, attend church have heard this story or have heard snippets of it. We've heard about the angel Gabriel visiting Mary at her home in Nazareth to tell her that she would give birth to, jo to God's son. And how Gabriel then visited Joseph to assure him that it would be all right to wed Mary still. And we've heard about how Joseph and Mary had to travel to Bethlehem to register for a census. And while they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. And we've heard about the shepherds and the wise men and the angel chorus singing up in the sky. That's, that's nothing new about that story that many of us know. But maybe there are some parts that might not be as familiar. And even if we have heard them before, we might not fully understand their significance. We've spent the last two weeks talking about John the Baptist. Well, today, we are going to go back to his humble beginnings, literally. Let me share this scripture from Luke chapter 1, starting with verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in a hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt, leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Well, let's, let's put this story into perspective a little bit. Mary has just been visited by the angel Gabriel. And in that conversation, Gabriel tells Mary that her relative Elizabeth, in her old age, is also pregnant. Now, we're not told exactly how Mary and Elizabeth are related. Tradition teaches us they were cousins, but that might not have been the case. But that probably doesn't matter as much. We know that they were related. And the baby that Elizabeth is pregnant with is John the Baptist. Now, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, was a priest. Elizabeth herself had descended from a family of priests. And Luke tells us that they were both righteous people living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. These two would have been high up in the terms of social status within this town. But there was one problem. They didn't have any children. Elizabeth and Zechariah lived in a society that praised children and, and excuse me, prized children and family. And so they most likely would have felt deep sadness over their inability to have children, especially Elizabeth, because we are told she was the barren one of the couple. But the situation was even more painful and complicated because people at the time tended to associate children with divine blessing. So people were wondering, what had Elizabeth and Zechariah done to anger God so much that God did not grant them children? What did this fact say about their personal integrity? Now, of course, today we know better. There are usually medical reasons that couples aren't able to conceive. And we don't believe that the inability to have children is a punishment from God. But during Elizabeth's and Zechariah's time, that wasn't the case. They didn't have the medical knowledge then that we do now. Well, Zechariah receives his own visit from the angel Gabriel, who tells them that his prayer has been heard and that Elizabeth would conceive and have a child. Now, Zechariah had a hard time believing this because he says, I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. I think anybody who is more aged being told that they were going to become a parent for the first time might have a little bit of doubt. 
But because Zechariah didn't believe Gabriel, or excuse me, he didn't believe Gabriel, the angel made Zechariah mute until the time that the baby was born, which might have been a good thing, because then he wasn't able to tell Elizabeth that he told the angel that she was getting on in years. I mean, at age, it's a kind of sensitive thing. Well, Elizabeth does conceive a child, and she goes into seclusion for five months. And there could have been any number of reasons for this. She might have wanted to make sure that the pregnancy was going to be viable. Can you imagine what it might have been like for her in a culture that viewed pregnancy as a divine blessing if she became pregnant and then miscarried? So maybe she didn't want anybody to know that she was pregnant until she was sure that she would be able to deliver. She might not have chosen to have people see her until the time that she knew or was fairly certain that she would be able to deliver. Or maybe she just wanted to stay at home where things were familiar, where things were safe, where the food was. Well, that brings us to today's scripture. Mary, who is newly pregnant, goes to visit Elizabeth, who is about six months along. And when Mary arrives and greets Elizabeth, we're told Elizabeth's baby leaped in her womb. And we spent the last two weeks talking about how John the Baptist came to prepare the way of the Lord. Folks, that started in utero. Through that leap in his mother's womb, John told the only person he could at the time, Hey, Mom, Mom, do you know who this is? Do you know who's here? The Messiah is here. I wish we knew more about what had happened in those next few months. Luke tells us that Elizabeth, or excuse me, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months, and it makes sense that Mary would have stayed until John was born, would have helped out with the new baby, and, and then got home afterwards. But what must Mary have learned from and talked with about with Elizabeth? What did she gain in those three months that she was there? Well, there are two lessons that I hope we can gain and take away from the story of Mary and Elizabeth today. And for the first one, we need to look at the words from Micah that Karen read for us earlier. Micah tells us that the town of Bethlehem is actually Bethlehem of Ephrathah. And it's one of the little clans of the tribe of Judah. It's a little town. Now, Bethlehem is usually translated house of bread, but sometimes it can be translated into house of war. So there's a choice to be made. Feed or kill. Tend or destroy. Now the name Ephrathah usually means fruitful, but it can also mean barren or worthless. Again, words that mean the complete opposite from one another, and we have to choose which definition we should use. Well, Micah suggests the definition that we should choose. He shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, and they shall live secure, for he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Micah tells us that the one to come will stand strong like one who is going to war, but instead of fighting, will feed his flock like a shepherd. He'll be more concerned with fruitfulness than with the emptiness of death and killing. And through him, we will know peace and we will sit secure. And because of that security, because of trusting in that peace, even in warlike times, even in unsettled times, being fed the bread of fruitful, fruitfulness, we can do amazing things incredible things, unimaginable things, like saying yes to a fruitfulness that is almost incomprehensible in our world. Now, I don't think any of us is going to be visited anytime soon by an angel showing up in our living room and asking us if we would be willing to give birth to the Son of God. But God does ask something from each of us. And this story of Mary and Elizabeth shows us the, 
that beautiful and wondrous things can happen when we choose to say yes to God. Here's the second lesson. God chooses a rinky-dink little place, no place really, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, to become a significant some place. God chooses a nobody to be a significant somebody whom the whole world knows. A young woman, really a teenage girl, from a backwater town like Bethlehem of Ephrathah. Mary is her name. Even her name is common. Plain Mary. Ordinary Mary except she isn't ordinary or plain. She is as beautiful as all of creation. She is exceptional as is each person made in God's image. And she is made even more exceptional, even more beautiful by her obedience to the invitation from God. Her acceptance of the gift and the calling and the joy that is planted deep within her And so she runs. She runs through the hill country. She runs to share this joy. She runs to be in relationship. She runs to Elizabeth. Now let's not forget Elizabeth's story here. A woman getting on in years. A woman who Gabriel called barren when he visited Mary. A woman viewed as worthless because of her inability to conceive yet also a woman who, having waited most of her life, said yes to God and became a somebody. She was a woman barren who became fruitful. And because of this, she was able to recognize the fruitfulness of Mary. When Mary arrives, Elizabeth said, Blessed are you and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But she also says, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. She's not only talking about Mary here. She's talking about herself. I mentioned earlier how Elizabeth must have felt prior to her pregnancy. She might have given up on the idea that she would become a mother. And yet here she was, pregnant, finally. And Mary is with her, there to see the impossible birth come to be possible long enough to hear the naming long enough to feel the blessing long enough to breathe the fullness of god do we sometimes give up too soon do we sometimes despair too soon do we feel inadequate too long are we unable to wait for blessing for fruitfulness. To the person who feels like life has passed you by and like no one knows or cares if you even exist, from you shall come something beautiful, something exceptional. Maybe it has already taken root within your soul. Maybe it's bursting forth even now. Maybe it is a love that shines like a, like a star that draws someone from afar, from a far off place. Maybe it is a grace that blesses those around you in ways that just might surprise you if you stopped long enough to see. Maybe it's a wisdom that someone longs for to work around an obstacle in their life. Maybe it's a friendship that saves, even literally saves a life. What's within you that makes The children of God leap for joy upon hearing your voice. What are you giving birth to even now as you make your way in the world today? The all too human tragedy is feeling as if we are worthless, as if we are barren. When God has placed within us a fruitfulness that would stagger our own imagination, let alone the imaginations of those around us, especially those who are thought of as small or insignificant. 
the call of the prophets foreshadows the call of the one who comes to love us with a fierce and frightening passion, a transforming presence and a healing grace. The prophets rage because they carry the wounds of a hurting world, almost as profound as the one who felt the sharp tips of the straw in a manger, as harshly as he felt the nails on a cross. Perhaps that's the true blessing of home. It's a place where no one is a nobody. It's a place where no one is inadequate or insignificant. It's a place where all are beautiful and exceptional. That sounds like a really great place, doesn't it? A place where everyone is welcomed in love with an embrace from the Christ child born so long ago. And it is waiting for all of us if we come home for Christmas. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. Christmas is coming closer. It's closer than you think. Emmanuel is waiting for us when we come home. Let us sing our final song together. It is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. It's a short one, so we'll sing it through twice. Those of you who are here in person, I would invite you to rise as you're able. after the benediction, please uh, take a seat uh, for Karen's postlude, as, uh, and then you will be dismissed to keep people from bunching up as best as we can. Uh, but receive the benediction. Go with the love of God, who extends mercy from generation to generation. Go with the illumination of the Holy Spirit, who prepares us for the coming of our Lord. Go with the peace of the Christ child who comes to partner with us to bring the kingdom that will never end. Amen. Amen.